Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 85 and this week I am sure that it is hobby vlog number 85. This week new working circumstances hit me and it has been very busy but I have managed to get little bits of hobbying done here and there so there is actually something to show you uh, which is good because I was a little worried that I'd get nothing done. Uh, not as much on the model railway as I'd hoped but that's slowly going to change as deliveries have started to arrive for the next step uh, which you'll see and uh, yeah it's good to get a little bit done and Rosie is loving it she uh, sees it every day and, and loves it uh, and that's what matters. So anyway that's enough of a ramble I thank you very much for watching uh, I really hope that you enjoy the video and uh, do comment below I do reply to all of your comments so don't be shy say hello uh, and yeah I'll see you again at the end. So here we are, we are ready to start. Uh, I've got the secret thing, which was a miniature. So I've used one of the oofs, uh, many oofs, just because it made me laugh. I love them, I've got loads printed out. Uh, so the idea I've got, as I said, and as I've shown you already on the screen is this uh, fantastic shot of the uh, Snowdonia Railway coming up. Um, now, what I'm probably gonna try to do, and I don't know whether I'm gonna achieve this, what I'm probably gonna try to do is do this headland and then I'm probably going to try and print out this picture but have it so that the headland is kind of on the in reality and then when you look at it straight on you've got this lovely backdrop behind it so that's my plan anyway whether that works or not is another matter but the first part that I'm going to need to do is I've got my 10 centimeter square uh, thing here is I'm going to need to basically use modeling compound as you probably would have guessed knowing me to make up this rough uh, this rough layout here so if we consider that to be the front what it's going to do is it's going to be coming up towards uh, towards the camera actually which is going to make it an interesting one to photograph it's coming up towards the viewer with the railway coming in a curving loop like this and then a nice curved headland out there. Now, uh, I'm probably going to need to do this very, very tiny. So the railway road, the railway lane, is probably only going to be the front corner because there's actually like a little kind of outcropping there. So we're going to want to capture that. So I'm going to mix up some modeling compound. I'll probably run the camera and point it at it and put some music on. And I'm going to attempt to sculpt that in, in the uh, modeling compound, which should be, should be doable, I think. Uh, I just need to do it very carefully um, and not feel too much pressure. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens and uh, see whether this is going to be an idea that flies uh, and if it doesn't I'll come up with something else. So I'll get myself ready and then pop some music on and you can watch as I attempt to do this. And that didn't take as long as I thought it might and I actually think it's okay. So what we'll have is we'll have the, the railroad coming in around here. This is going to be a rocky bluff which is actually just out of shot on the picture. And then we have the little kind of like inletty kind of uh, gully here. And then we have the headland coming out over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knife and very carefully cut down these, these areas here which are still blue so that they're a part of the slope. Um, and then when that's done I'm going to let that to dry and then we'll come back and next thing I'll do is I'll put some, probably put some white grout over it, white grout mix and PVA just to kind of seal it. And then it'll be a case of decorating it with the uh, with flock and with stones. And then uh, and also obviously working on the train, which I've got some quite nice ideas about. I'm going to scratch build that as well. So yeah, uh, that went well. Uh, I'll, I'll get that carving done now. Uh, next time you see it, it'll be carved and we'll start to look at doing the, um, doing the finishing off of this. It's going to be quick if this works well. <laughs> so we had a couple of deliveries, which is pretty cool. The first thing that's arrived is this little buggy here, which has uh, the playground equipment, which will go with the school when the school goes in up at the other end um, in the uh, in the in the town. Now, the other thing that arrived, I'm particularly excited by, still in its box, 
is the tree which has the tree house in it which I'm going to put somewhere on the farm and I'm currently I'm an hourring about its location <laughs> um, I have a couple of options I could put one I could put here actually in the farm yard but I think it's a bit big and it kind of dominates and it hides the duck pond slightly so I'm not sure about that the other option I've got is up here at the top next to the hay field or down here kind of in the middle of this this is the cow field or even up here on the top over here which is another option I could have. Now, I'm not totally sure at the moment. Uh, Angela's um, on the case of thinking. My instinct is that the center of the cow field is the best way, or maybe even towards the edge of the cow field, um, because A, Rosie will be able to see it easier from, from here, um, and B, it's not quite as close to other things that I want to have obvious and want to be able to be seen. Um, but that will be the next thing to put in. So once I've decided exactly where that's going to go, uh, I will put that in place um, and, uh, and, and then probably do a few more trees as well. Uh, I need to put a little bit more uh, into this, um, into the um, greenery that's on the farm. Uh, but the hedges are now pretty solid uh, with how much PVA I've poured over them. So they're now there. I have these dry briar patches, which I'm going to be using um, also to detail around the hedges. I've left a few gaps, so I'm going to add these in. And I'm also going to put them probably on top of the removable section, which is still a little bit not done. And then also, um, I'm just going to put patches of them um, along here, along the bank, just by the uh, by the train, by the where the railway line goes. So I'm going to use a lot of these. So next steps is going to be the tree and the briar patches. And uh, yeah, we really are getting to the final detailing of this farm now. So I've just mixed up uh, some white grout, PVA and very finely sifted sand. Uh, there is a link in the description below to how I do that. And what that gives me is a really nice texture that I can paint over the top of a base that goes very, very solid, very quickly indeed actually. It gives a little bit of texture. You can control how much texture you get by how much and what size of grit you mix in. So it's a very flexible paste that dries quick, goes hard and uh, is, is really easy to use. Now I've just realized I've started doing this and I've not got any, uh, I've got my base. Uh, I normally set these on a uh, little kind of like grid. So I'm just going to go and grab that so you can see that as well in case you haven't seen it before. Um, and as you can see, I've almost finished painting it already. So I'll just go and grab something to sit it on. So here we are. This is what I sit my things on so that I can move them around and I don't have to get my finger near what I've painted on. As you can see, it's already going off. It really does dry very quickly. I'm going to apply it around the edge as well just to finish it off. Um, when it does dry quickly, I, am, I still do normally leave it quite a long time and I might indeed do two coats and this is where the other thing to say about this stuff is I can pop this in the fridge now um, often I forget about it and come back and find it's all gone off but it's, it trips off of plastic quite easily it's better for use on um, foam or modelling compound but yeah, this will be, still be good tomorrow so if I pop this in the fridge now, leave it in the fridge, the, uh, the little kind of like tray I've got here, uh, then it will still be good in the morning, which is really cool. So I can mix up and do two coats with the same mix and not waste anything. So I think I'm going to do that. So there we are. That's how quick and easy it is to apply the texture. Um, I'll do a second coat without filming. The next time I'll come to this project, we'll probably be looking at doing um, either the... Um, Probably look at doing the texturing and uh, building the train track, and then I've got to start making the train. As another impressive sunset goes off through the window, it's beautiful to watch, love standing here. Let's have a pan down and have a look and see what's in front of me on the uh, model railway. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna plant this tree, and I've been having some thoughts, been planning this for um, a couple of days now, and what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tree in the hay field. Now the reason I'm going to do this, and um, Angelo is uh, very much in agreement we've discussed this, uh, we want it to be very obvious and easy for Rosie to see. And also she makes a very good point that it does kind of set it off, it makes it, it gives it a little bit of a kind of contrast which I think is absolutely right. So what I'm going to do is take this out of its packet and then make a little area here and then glue it down again using um, some solid glue and then when that's dry tomorrow I can come along and I can add in the underneath bits and uh, make it a little bit more embedded into the scenery. So that's the plan. So I'm going to get this out of this packet 
and then I'll bring you along and show you how I'm going to stick it down. So here we are, that's out of the packet. It wasn't very easy. The one thing I'm not a big fan of these about these Hornby scale scenics, as wonderful as the trees actually are, is they're kind of got this really sticky glue that is stuck to the cardboard. It's very, very hard to extract them, which is a bit annoying. I don't know whether I'm doing something wrong. I might be doing something wrong, but anyway, I managed to extract it without damaging it. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is use my copy decks to apply to the bottom of the base and then just settle it in place. Now, like that, there we are. So once that's gone off, which I'll leave overnight, as I've said, then I'll come along and I'll build up again in the same way with the same technique with the, with the uh, small scatter and then the larger scatter. And I will build up the, um, the texture around the tree. I'm actually gonna turn that around a little bit. I actually want to have the tree house there. So I'm going to put a little bit more copper decks on the bottom and we just rubbed it all off. And I actually want to have the tree house towards the front. So there we are, that's how I want it. So yeah, so once that's dry, I'll come along and I'll build up the little bit of scenery around it. Um, but yeah, that's looking really, really good. Let me move the camera so you can see a little bit more what Rosie will see when she's looking at it. So there you are, there's the, uh, there's the tree house in this lovely tree. Really, really pleased with that. It's a lovely little touch. I think she's gonna love it. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the detailing continues. So next up on this is gonna be a dry brushing stage. As you can see, I've painted the black, black over the top of the sand. And what I've got here is I've got some of the brown. This is the chocolate brown that I use to make my normal terrain paint. But for this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dry brushing over the top of the black to get where I want to have the soil. And it's such a quick and effective process. I will zoom in shortly when I've finished and show you what it looks like. Because it just works so much better than, and I actually prefer it, I, always, I don't do it as much as I should, because I prefer it far over doing a plain brown base you get so much better variation and I'm what I would suggest that you can do is potentially do quite a few different colors before you get to the brown and really build up an interesting kind of like purpley bluey base which would look good I know that Sean is now from Sean's bit box is nodding and going yes yes stones aren't gray dirt isn't brown so there we are that's how quick that was so if i zoom in you can see what an effective effect great word effective effect that is so having said that stones aren't gray what i'm now about to do is do a gray dry brush well just with the same brush there's no point in worrying about it too much um, over the top of this just to give it a highlight um, and I'll probably take some of this off afterwards. I just want to kind of like put a little bit of a different colour on the exposed stone. Because the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to have to stop the camera and get a different brush for that, is the actual, um, is, is this, is the actual head of the fallen statue. So I have a different colour over there. Uh, which I'm going to use. So I'm going to stop the camera quickly, we'll readjust and then I'll show you that. So what I've got here is this really pinky kind of colour which is actually called Safari. And what I'm going to be doing is, it's probably going to take several coats and it might be that I should have primed this first but never mind. Um, and I'm going to actually put this over and I might actually come in um, with some different colours as well but initially uh, this is going to be my, my base coat. Uh, and I'm going to paint all of the statue with it because I want this to stand out quite nicely and um, don't worry I haven't forgotten about the tree that I'm going to put on this I just wanted to get all of the painting done before I started doing the uh, doing the greenery which will be going around it and I know exactly how the tree is going to go in and I've even picked it out so that will be happening at some point soon so so yeah so what we're going to do is we're just going to paint around all of this with this safari colour which is a kind of dusty pink and then I'll let that dry, might have to do a couple of coats. And that will really stand out 
once it's done, once it's got enough coats on it, it'll really stand out against the rest of the green and the brown and the black. So that'll be a really nice, really nice touch. And I am doing the other one alongside at the same time. As you can see, I've not done the brown wash, brown dry brush. But I've done the grey, and I'm about to do the, uh, the the statue now. So yeah, I'm doing them in, doing them together as I said I would. So yeah, good to see this progressing as well. So it's time to start dressing this. What I've decided on, as I've said, is some trees. So this tree is going to sit there. I think I might put the dead one there actually. If this dead tree goes there, here it is, I've got a little hole, then I think this tree will go there. So we'll have a dead tree here and then this big tree here. And the reason I'm doing this is this is going to be impassable anyway and so it'll make it look quite cool. And the reason why I'm deciding this now is I want to get my holes in place so when I plant these trees I um, that's done and I'm not disturbing anything that I've added and I know also to not put any greenery underneath where these trees are because there just wouldn't be greenery underneath big trees like this. So a little bit of bridle work to dig a hole in and that's where those two trees are going to go. So what I'm going to do now is get my scenic glue out and get my uh, scatter um, and put the turf on and then when that's still wet I'm going to glue these trees in place. So I'll gather my scatter together and then I'll put some music on you can watch as I do that. So while I was assembling this and putting these trees on I made a bit of a mistake particularly at this end where the hole I put in I didn't realize until I'd glued it just wasn't deep enough and I cut too much idiot, idiot, idiotically I'd cut too much of the um, of the skewer off the bottom of the tree uh, and so it's just not stable so I put the clamp in here to support it while it dried and it's dried a bit and what I'm about to do now is attempt to rescue the situation and I'm going to do that with in several ways the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this twig here which I've got from the garden and I'm going to glue this so that it acts as a bit of a support and you can see that it does when I get it right it does kind of go across the trunk here and just down here the trunk of the dead tree and then leave that to dry and then when that's dry I'll come in and I will use um, bits of uh, filler so uh, sand and dirt and what have you probably use some um, geek gaming stuff some, some of Luke's stuff so maybe some uh, forest floor cover and I'll build up a couple of layers over and around to fill in underneath where this log is so that there, I, I build that um, terrain up there now this is something i shouldn't have to do it's just a complete mistake um, but i'll save it it'll be fine and i thought i'd show you how i'm going to do that so it's not really going to be possible for me to film the process uh, but what i'll do is i'll bring you along um, when i've got something to see uh, so you can see how it looks because it's going to be a bit fiddly for me to get in there to uh, to do this um, and particularly with my hands in the way of the camera you won't be able to see it so yeah so i'll show you what it looks like when it's done but that's the idea glue this across fill it underneath with some more terrain stuff Today, amongst other things that arrived, which were books for Rosie mainly, <laughs> uh, I had this order that I've put in for the model railway, which is really, really cool. So you can see what I've got here. Uh, here we have some cows, here we have some pigs. So that is gonna be able to populate the farm. So I'll probably actually go right now and put the cows on because I've been really sad not to have them. Over here we have some Woodland Scenics um, gravestones. Now they'll be going both for the model railway and also for the uh, one of the other diorams I'm working on. Um, so that's really good. Uh, then we've got a farmer's market for in the town and we've got a windy day play. So we've got some uh, kites. Now Rosie loves her kites. So that's going to be really cool. I'll work out where they're going to go, whether that's going to be maybe 
um, on the field or maybe I'll keep that for the other railway when I start that the main one I'm not sure if that'll go on hers uh, but at least uh, she does love that she'll enjoy seeing it and the other thing that arrived is this which is the village school which is what's going to be my next big project on this um, building the school building the church are going to be my big projects coming up as I start to work on the town end uh, so I would be building this on the on the channel and bringing you along to show you how I do it this is a super quick card kit. I've heard very, very good things about them. This will be the first one I've ever built. So it's gonna be a fun project to do. So there we are, really, really excited to have these. And I think that I'm gonna go and put the cows on the scene right away. So here we are, this is the uh, cow field. <laughs> uh, and I'm just gonna put the black and white cows on here, just using PVA. And I'm just gonna kinda of like dot them in place. PVA is a good idea because it means it'll be easy for me to move them in the future. They're not going to be uh, too hard to pick up and shift. Um, I've got a little calf. Why not have a little baby one as well? A tiny little calf, which I'll put near the mother here. There we are. Rosie is currently asleep. I'm not expecting this. Oh, there's cow pats. <laughs> I've just seen... <laughs> There's cow pats in the kit, that is too cool. Yeah, so Rosie is currently asleep um, and will be waking up very shortly. So this will be very, very exciting for her to see, I can tell you. So I'll have a cow sitting down underneath that tree and then I'm gonna have to play with the cow pats, work out where I'm gonna put them. So I'm not totally sure. <laughs> That's just too cool. I might have to model some of my own. <laughs> That's really tickled me. There we are. So we've got some cows scattered across the field now for Rosie to be amazed by and uh, cow pats for me to try and take out the kit and work out where I'm going to put them. <laughs> when I've done that, I'll bring you along again and show you. <laughs> That's really tickled me. I'm only putting the black and white ones on. I'm going to keep these brown ones for the other part of the railway um, when I do my main one. So yeah, there we are. Cows are in the cow field. So let's go to shaky cam and show you where I've put the cow pats. So I've got one down here just behind this cow. I've got one here that Rosie will be able to see a little bit better because it's right at the front. And then I've got a couple more just kind of scattered here. So there we are, a couple of cow pats. I'm quite pleased with that, that's really tickled me. And I'm very pleased with how they look on the field. And I know that Rosie will love it, which is what matters. So there we are. So what I need to do is I need to get an approximation of this very yellowy green grass. So what I've got is I've got some yellow and I've got some green and hopefully that's going to work for me. I'm not going to paint it, I'm going to dry brush it. So I only need a very small amount of each. So what I do when I want a very small amount of something is I shake the bottle up and then use the bottle lid because that is a really good way of getting a small amount of paint. And it also means that you're much less likely to spill it, which is a good thing when you yeah, don't want to spill things. So what I'm going to do I'm going to take some yellow onto my palette and I'm going to take some green and that's probably going to be way too much and I probably need to have more yellow looking at that so we'll just keep adding yellow until we get something that approximates what I'm looking at there which actually that's not looking too bad is it Maybe a little bit more yellow there we are so once I've mixed that up what I need to do is get my dry brush and I'm just going to dry brush that all over the all, all over everything so I'll come in for, for this I'll come in with some more gravel so um, let me get a dry brush and we'll paint that on and then we can let that dry and uh, then go on to the next step so here goes let's see how this works sort of thing that could completely ruin it or work very nicely of course you don't want to use flock on something at this scale because it will just be crazy big you need to use something like dry brushing with the texture underneath it Yeah, I think that's come out quite nice actually. Let me shift the camera and get them a bit closer together so you can see. 
I actually think that has worked superbly against all the odds. So there we are. So uh, next step will be to do the stones um, and the actual track, and then it'll be a case of working on the train. So yeah, coming on well. So it's been a good week this week with the 20 minutes. Uh, what you can see here is the remaining walls I have yet to paint. Um, I've just finished putting the green grey on, so they've all got that undercoat. Uh, that's what I did with my 20 minutes this evening on Saturday night. And what I'll do now is I'll pan the camera around and show you the whole batch as they're looking now. So there you have it. We've got the doors, which I started off with, and then I have been making really good progress on these walls. Very, very pleased with them. Do need to give a shout out to Croftonator from the Arena, the Contest Discord. He's the guy who uh, I originally saw do this fantastic colourful scheme and it's working really, really well. Very pleased with it. So I've only got two more of those medium sized walls to do and then I'll be on to the large walls and then this entire thing will be done and then I'll be on to the miniatures. So it's worked to an extent but it's still very wibbly wobbly. Now this one's fine but this one's wibbly wobbly that's one that i trimmed too much of the of the of the trunk off such a stupid thing to do so what i'm doing now is i'm mixing up a very very small amount of modeling compound and i'm also mixing in some brown paint so that the modeling compound will be brown <laughs> um, it doesn't go very brown but it just won't be white which is what i'm aiming for and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come in and i'm going to build up that area around it with modeling compound. This is the nuclear option as such, but I think it will work because it will build up a solid around the outside of it, around that trunk. And then I can come in afterwards and uh, put a little bit more kind of texture in if I need to. So I'm gonna try and do this on camera, but I don't know if I'll be able to. Let's see. So I might need to get a tool because what I need to do is build it in under here and go on top as well. So let's see how well this works. Right, that'll be a good starter. I'll let that go off and then check to see if I need to put any more to make it a bit more solid. Um, I might come in off camera and smooth that a bit as well. It's a bit hard to get to from that angle. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the things you have to do to save stupid mistakes. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to mix up some more um, modeling compound, which I've got here, and actually build up this area properly, more solidly. I couldn't get in, I wasn't able to give enough support. So we're just gonna extend the terrain piece a little bit further out this way just to give it a little bit more support. And what I will do is I will then come in while this is wet and stick the tree in as my plan was then before with the kind of like munging it into place. But this is going to be a more solid base for the tree to sit in. As you can see, this one's solid as anything. That one's fine. It was just mainly cutting the trunk too short which was the mistake and what i can do is once this has gone off i can come in with some more modeling on sorry some more scenery stuff and i might actually let this go off and not put the tree back in just yet let this new lump that i'm building out from the edge of this terrain piece go off then drill it out and glue it again so I can then do the scenic underneath it. Bit of a bit of a frustration because I was so close to in a happy place with this and then made that mistake. Cut just just the mistake was cutting the trunk too short. So just remember that you can always cut more off, <laughs> but it's very, very hard to put stuff back on that you've cut off. So be more a little bit more kind of cautious. <laughs> Having said that. The one thing that has worked very well, which I will now use, is the Luke's APS's uh, Pine Forest ground cover looks absolutely superb just here. So if we move the camera very slightly, 
so it gives it a little more light that looks really nice it looks like it really does look like underneath the pine forest so i'm going to use more of that anyway i will let this bit of bottling compound dry now um, and then um, get the tree back in place and finish the scenicking and then we'll do the, tuff, the tufts and the longer grasses and then we'll be done well there you are it was as i always say a more productive week than i realized it is amazing what you can get done when you just grab five minutes here or two minutes there if you're waiting for something you don't sit and stare at the wall you just do something it's amazing how much you can achieve and this week's video is evidence of that because that's exactly what's happened i've done my 20 minutes a day painting and i've grabbed a couple of minutes here and a couple of minutes there just when i've had a chance and I've achieved far more than I thought. I've progressed Rosie's Railway. I've started an encounter challenge where I thought this month would be completely out of the picture. Uh, and not on camera, I've also managed to get very close to finishing my next Battle Games in Middle Earth. So yeah, really, really cool, really amazing. And I hope that inspires you to maybe just give it a go. Just get up and do stuff. Don't think you haven't got time. Just, just take those couple of minutes that you have, um, that everyone has scattered throughout the day and you'll be amazed at what you can achieve. So that's my preaching done. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Ignore me if you want to as well, obviously. It's entirely up to you. You do your hobby how you want to. Uh, just trying to inspire you there. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Pop a comment below if you think I'm right. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. Uh, just whatever. It'd be wonderful to hear from you. I do reply to all of my comments. Uh, and I will wrap up by saying, as I always do, thank you for watching. And please, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.